Make sure you follow me on social media to get updates and ask me questions. Enjoy the video! With the latest changes regarding the product, we actually broke the create. So if I go to products and then slash create, and I try to create a product, this, as you can see, it will fail. So if I go to console and try to create the product, we get a 500 error. And the reason why we do that is because if I go to the Laravel project and I open Laravel log and clear everything, back to this, create again, you can see that the user ID doesn't have default value. So during the create, we didn't know about this user ID. So now that we know, we have to make some changes. And we have two possible solutions. The first solution is to fix this in the Laravel application by concatenating the user ID right here. And the second solution is the easiest one, which is to include the user ID. Let me go to the create component. Is to include the user ID right here. So we can get the authenticated user and pass the ID of that user. However, you should never trust user input. So we don't care about name and price and description here because these depend on user input. But the user ID is something that we have to handle server side and not client side. So in the Laravel application, I will concatenate the authenticated user ID. So plus user ID. And of course, we have to use auth to get the ID. But before we do that, let's make sure we include auth and the user ID is specified in the fillable array. So with this small change, the product creation now should work. So if I click create, it goes back and you can see the product right here. Uh, you know what? Let me also add a create link right at the top of the nav bar. So if I go to the nav bar component, we can add the link right after the feed. Okay. Products, create and create. Okay, so if I go back to this, I can click create and it goes to this page. Perfect. All right, now let's see how we can implement the update. So I will create a new component inside the product and call it edit. I will copy the code from the create component and pass it here since the user interface is almost the same. We just have to change the click to update and the text here to update as well. Okay, so let's create the route for this. Let me close everything else and open the routes.js. We have to go down here. I will copy this. Okay, so the route will be products slash and then we need a route parameter. So the way we can declare a route parameters is by saying colon and then the name of the parameter, which will be product in our case. After that, I will just say edit. So the component that we are going to use is edit. And if I go back to this and I say products slash one and then edit, this will appear. It looks like the create component. However, it is not. As you can see, nothing works for the moment because we have a couple of errors. And if I go to the console, actually, we do have a lot of errors, but don't worry, we are going to fix them. OK, so to fix them, we have to go inside the JavaScript. So we do not need this anymore. And let me close this as well. OK. So we want to make a GET request to the server to get a product with the ID specified in the URL, which is one in my case. So this product here should be empty when we start. So let me delete everything from here and I will create a new method and call it get product. Now inside this method, we want to do a get request to get the product. So the very easy, we already know this. A get request, the endpoint is API slash and then products and then we want to concatenate this dot route dot params dot product. So this will get the 
route parameter product. And remember, we have it as product because this is how we named it, product. So if I go back to this, this will get the route parameter product, which will be the ID. And after that, we want to get the response. So we are going to get a response back, obviously, and the response will have the product that we are looking for. So this dot product, which is this product right here, which is empty for now, will be equal to the response dot body. And this includes the product that we are getting from the server. Now, in addition, we want to call this getProduct method the moment the component is going through the created lifecycle. So the moment the component enters a created lifecycle, created, it will call this dot get product, this method right here. So this method, as we said, it will do a get request to the server, it will get the product and then assign the product to this data right here, which is empty for now, the product. Whenever we start, it is empty. And don't forget that we are using two-way binding and as a result, the inputs will be automatically filled. Now, before we continue, let's see the result. Let's go back to this. So I will refresh and we still get an error. So it says update is not defined. The method update is not defined. So let's define it right now. I will change this to update. The request is put. The endpoint is pretty much the same. We just have to concatenate again the product parameter. So params.product. And we are still passing this dot product because remember that we have to pass some data to the server to update this product. So yeah, the product that we have to pass is this product right here that we will edit. All right, now if we go back, everything works except that we are getting a 500 error, but this is related to Laravel. So this endpoint corresponds to the show function in the resource controller. So if I go to the Laravel application and I open the products controller, we have to create a show method. So this will accept an ID and it will return product, actually response, and it will be a JSON. And we want to find the product with that ID. All right. So if I go back to this now, reload, we do not get anything. And this is because the product with ID one is empty. And if I go to view up edit, you can see that product here is an empty object, not because the code is not working, but because we do not have a product with ID one. So let me get a product that, uh, you know, has an ID. So product with ID 13. So let me try 13 here. And this is the product. And the moment we go to this, as you can see, it is automatically filled. Now to update this product, we need the update function in the Laravel application. So let's do it right now. So after the show, we need a new method, new function, update, we get the request and we also have the ID. So I will get the product. So product, oops, okay. Find this, ah, come on. I cannot really type today. I don't know why anyway. So we get that product and then we call the update function and we want to pretty much update everything. What I'm doing. Oh my God. Okay. Like that. And at the end, we just return a response. Are you serious? Oh, come on. Anyway, it will be a JSON like always. And we pass the product. Okay. So if I go back to this, let me also open the console just to make sure that we're not getting any error. So if I say here, let's say updated, I click update. We are redirected back to the feed because this is, this is what we are doing right now is to redirect back to the feed. But if I go back to this, as you can see, the product is updated and it doesn't matter if I refresh the page, the change still remains there. Now, of course, I don't want the user to be redirected. So what I will do is to show a pop up using suite alert. So let me import suite alert from suite alert. Okay. And down here, what I will do is to say swell 
and I will say updated that text will be your product has been updated and of course it is a successor uh, message so success all right back to this let me try this again the price will be let's say 40 update and we get the pop-up pretty cool let me try this again so let's try everything actually one two three product price will be 45 and i will say here hello update refresh the changes are there something else that i want to do is to show the edit button as we did with the delete button so for this we have to go to the product component and down here i will create a router link the text will be edit the two this will be we should include the column there because we are not passing a text as you can see right now i will say products and then i want to concatenate the product id and then plus edit all right so if i go back to the feed we should have the edit yes we do uh, let me apply the class btn btn success now it looks better so if i click here we go to this page if i say one two three the product price 10 and then one two three again update we get the pop-up so if i click edit we go to this and everything is updated okay so this is enough for the update next time we will handle errors suppose you access a product that uh, doesn't exist in my case product with id 1 you get this empty form. However, the reason the form is empty is because there is no product with such ID. So after we handle this problem globally, and you will see what globally means in the next video, we will come back to create an update in order to perform some client-side validation. And of course, we are not going to use HTML5 for that. For example, we are not going to use the attributes like required, etc., etc. So what we are going to use is to use uh, a package that will help us to do exactly that, to have some pretty good validation errors there. Anyway, we still have time for that. For now, this is enough.